It's high, it's far, it's gone! And now, it's mine. Which is actually kind of strange if you think about it. I mean, why is it that when a foul ball or a home run comes into the stands at a baseball game, the fan who catches it gets to keep it? It wasn't always that way. The ball was really a sacred object. The umpires would keep the ball in play until it was literally falling to pieces. So the idea that a fan would keep it was just kind of ludicrous. But as baseball crowds swelled through the early 20th century, fans became increasingly unwilling to part with those game balls. Teams responded by hiring ushers and security personnel to retrieve them. Now there was the occasional incident, especially after 1920, when Major League Baseball changed the rules regarding balls and mandated that fresh ones be used throughout the course of the game. When you're rolling the ball out of play after a couple of at-bats, but then you're telling fans they can't keep them, that doesn't seem fair. In 1921, New York Giants ownership raised some eyebrows by ejecting Reuben Berman, a 31-year-old businessman from the polo grounds, for refusing to return a foul ball. Now, making an example of a grown man is one thing, but what about an 11-year-old kid? You can go tell your son or daughter when they bring their glove to the game, thank Tuffy Reds. That's the voice of Holden, Massachusetts resident Patrick Cotter, grandson of Robert Tuffy Reds Cotter, who as a child would sneak into the Baker Bowl in Philadelphia to watch his beloved Phillies. On July 18, 1922, the 11 year old Cotter snagged a foul ball and refused to give it back to security, who hauled him before the team's business manager. But the brave young Cotter held his ground and the ball, and ownership saw a chance to establish a legal precedent once and for all that game balls, even foul balls, were team property. So he took him down to the precinct and insisted that he be arrested for larceny. By the time Cotter's mother arrived to bail out her son, the courthouse was closed, and Tuffy Reds spent the night in jail. At his arraignment the next morning, Judge Charles Lincoln Brown ruled in favor of Cotter and lambasted Philly's ownership. Such an act on the part of a boy is merely proof that he is following his most natural impulses. It is a thing I would do myself. The incident became a full-blown PR nightmare. Now, as you might imagine, it did not take long for club owners across the league to get the message and adopt a new policy when it came to fans and foul balls. Baseball was sort of realizing that if you make someone a fan as a kid, then you get a lifelong fan. And there's no better way than a special souvenir that kind of captures the essence of the game. As for Tuffy Reds, the Phillies made amends in 1998, honoring him as their fan of the century and presenting him with a fully sanctioned baseball signed by the entire team. Well, there you have it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Our thanks to Emerson College for always keeping us curious. If you want more curiosity content, check out this recent episode. I'm Edgar B. Herwick III. Stay curious out there. <laughs>